what is going on? What is going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and we're back in the studio, the Big Dog Podcast. And today's not going as planned, and that is not a bad thing. I love shifts in the universe. I love it when I got something planned that isn't like detrimental if it changes. And we're supposed to be in the studio this morning, and Jonathan knows I'm coming in, and he's set up for our monthly Q and A session that we do, right, Jonathan? Yep, very prepared. Very prepared. I mean, homeboy gets in here probably before the sun comes up, has everything squared away. He's a creature of habit. He likes to be ready, prepared. And I walk in with a friend, and I said, hey, bro, we're ditching Q&A. We're going two people. And he's like, that's going to take a second. 12 minutes off schedule. Not too bad. Hey, we were, and I was already late. So we're kind of running per usual. This is where we're at. Yeah, doing pretty good. You handled it. So, but I didn't know what I didn't know was going to happen in my life today. I'm so excited about really, really good friend of mine. I would say one of my best friends. And you would think you're like, what? Maybe this is how shitty of a friend I am. And we'll, we'll, we'll discuss this, but my best friends, I hardly ever see or talk to you. My, my truly best, best friends. That's sad. That's really sad. I, I, we'll talk about that another episode. Maybe I'll bring my therapist in and we'll, we'll talk about that piece. But who I've got in the studio today is because he came in to see me today and he brought donuts for the staff. I'm not going to touch them because he didn't know what I'm working on right now. And that's okay. But the staff's got donuts. I come in. I'm like, who the hell brought donuts up in here this morning? And Katie comes in and says, you just missed Larry. He probably drove by you. You didn't. I'm like, how, how long? She was maybe two minutes. So I get on the phone. I call him. Like, Are you close? I'm close, baby. I'll come back. And who walks in the door? My good buddy, Larry Inscore. Josh Wilson, I'm so excited to be here today. What's up, baby? Come on, man. <laughs> Dude, I am so excited. I feel famous being here. Look, I'm so excited. Hey, it's a big deal because this is the Big Dog this Podcast. This is a Big Dog Podcast. I'm a part of it. It's so great to see you today. I was so glad that you called me and said you would come in, and I was turned right around and came back. This is lining up to be a fantastic day. And it's just so funny. So Larry comes in and um, he just, he was stopping by to say what's up and say hi. Um, He reached out to me last week when I was traveling and when I'm traveling, people reach out to me, it just gets weird. And I dropped the ball. And so he popped by and then he missed me. And I was, it was a very good reminder that, Oh, I owed my buddy a a call. Um, And so he comes in, we're shooting the breeze. How much time you got? And I'm good for a couple hours. Cool, we're going to do a podcast. Indeed we are. And so now we're here. Dude, and you know, it's so true, though. I think the people that you care most about are the people that you get to see the least. And I mean, because, I mean, we haven't seen each other and you know, no. a long time. I hadn't even been up here to your new facility in over right. a year to see yeah. it. That's a bad friend. I don't know that that's a bad friend. <laughs> um, I, here, and here's maybe the funny thing. Is there a part subconsciously that... With those that we know, no matter what, at any second, you can pick up that phone and call, text, whatever. And if there's a need, there's without hesitation, you know it's done and handled. Yep. There's a part where we take for granted that you know that's there and you lose sight of you still got to work for it. it. That is true. But I think what you were saying on the front end is is exactly what it is. It's that you know you have that foundation of friendship. You yeah. know that person is there for you, and they're not going to go anywhere, and so you don't got to call them. <laughs> and, well, then, and then, right. you know, but uh, like you said, it is important to keep up with your the people that are close to you that have your back. Yeah. Um, make sure uh, that you're maintaining those friendships. Yeah, you got to keep the deposits So you going. bring donuts right. by. You brought the donuts, right? <laughs> now there's a deposit. So if there needs to be a withdrawal, it all it's that, equitable. That, that's right, right. Everybody you feels look out good for, about that's it. That's exactly if right. I'm now when I need you, I'll be like, right. do you remember that time I came by? Yeah. Next week, if you're super needy, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be like, hey, man, I brought those donuts, so you're going to bear with me for a little bit. <laughs> I need fine. to talk. Jonathan, you got friends like that, or you don't feel like your relationships are like that in your early 20s? Is it still like? I mean, I talk to a decent amount of my friends, like, pretty often, but it's really only, like, one or two people that I talk to, like, every day, and most of them I make music with. So it's really yeah. not, like, like, small talk. Yeah. But other than that, nope. A lot of friends that I just don't hear or see from. Yeah. Or hear, yeah, hear or see from. Just hanging out. See them eventually. Yeah. So I, I'm going to list some names. Yeah, let's go. But I know I'm going to offend a bunch of people. Yeah. But I'm going to list a handful of names, though. Um, so if you're excluded, don't take it personally. It's just, it's examples that are in my mind. So these are so, examples. This yes. is a small list. So um, 
three people I'm very close with, Nick and Tank and Joe from Off Leash. You know, they're within the organization, they're location owners. Yes. Um, you know, Nick's been on the show, founded Off Leash Canine. These guys understand day in and day out what I'm struggling with, what I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. We talk daily throughout yeah. the day on the phone, text messages, typically mm-hmm. group texts. It's probably been a year and a half since I've seen Joe. Probably two years since I physically seen Tank. Okay. I saw Nick in October because he was here, you know, for that seminar, but I hadn't seen him since the, the December before. Yeah. But we talk every day and I consider these some of the closest people in my life. Mm-hmm. Another great friend of mine, Mark Rosati, out in California. Oh, I right. know Mark. You know Mark. Shout You're a great out to friend Mark. Mark. Uh, absolutely. Mark I don't know when the last time I talked to Mark though. Right. But I still consider him one of my closest friends. What happens? He calls you today and needs something. Uh, uh, dude, I would literally go to California. And and happens, I've never even been. What happens if? You, what do you think happens? You call him and need something. Dude, he would literally be here. Uh huh. Get on a one of those planes that you can't get a crew for, and he'd dude, be right out. He's just on it. He's <laughs> on it. And so, you know, it, it's it's that deal. Um, my best friend's Kevin. Literally lives across the street from me. Mm-hmm. Hardly ever talk to him. Mm-hmm. Rarely see him. Mm-hmm. He lives across the street across from the me. Across the street. I know. Our kids see each other every day at school. It, it's just wild. But I know the strength in yeah. the relationships. Yeah. It's just a wild thing. Over uh, the holidays, we got to see some really, really good friends of ours, uh, Jen and Kelly, and and their husbands and, and their families. With COVID and all that mess, people have different feelings on things. The travel it changed, but usually we see them once a year. But these are Devon's closest, closest people. Yeah, absolutely. And some of my closest people. We all went to college together. Mm-hmm. It's just a weird thing. But then I got fools I talk to every day sitting in my <laughs> office across the hall, you know, who I'm seeing and talking to every day. Yeah. And I'm like, damn. I'm kidding. I love y'all. Y'all know that. <laughs> you know we're family. You know we're family. I think the deal is though, having those people that are so important to you. I, for, for me, at least when you're going through a tough time, just knowing that they're there is yes. the big thing. And, you 100%. know, like you said, I, I like how you said you make a deposit in the relationship. It's the deposits over time yes. that have created that relationship to where even if you don't talk for two or three years, right. you, you're still there for each other. The it means so much. Yeah. It means so cool. much. So look, I was talking um, before the show went live. Hey, Devin. My hot wife just walked by. Oh, there she, she is. Like, hey, look girl. Hey. Hey, I'll holler at you. <laughs> <laughs> so before the show, um, I was telling a little story. So, you know, all right, I don't want to talk about 75 hard every freaking time we're on the show. I won't do that. But we are on day 13. I'm still in the fight. Um, oh, that's what know, I brought donuts to? It's okay, man. It, don't, oh, it doesn't dude. affect me. Okay, good. I had dinner last night you, with Katie that's usually alcohol-induced and dessert and apps and 20-ounce bone-in fillets. Man, I had a sweet potato. Oh, come on. Broccoli, steamed. Six ounce. So when filet. you're in 75 hard, you would consider yourself a fortress. It's, you're just not affected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I am standing strong. But um, you know, I've been a little vitamin regimen, trying to make myself feel better, you know, some things. Good. And I have a new one that I tried this morning. Okay. All right. And it's like, hey, you just start oh, with one. Oh, this is a new vitamin, yeah. You got to test your tolerance, uh, empty stomach, wait <laughs> some time before you eat. Um and in combination, I'm fasting and just trying to do some different things. I ain't gonna lie. This vitamin has me freaking off the chain right now. <laughs> it says may increase heart rate. May yeah, there's a warning on the bottle, body, right? There is. The, <laughs> here's the thing. The, the print was so small on this bottle. I said, babe, I'm getting in the shower and uh, I can't read this bottle. Okay. I'm like, shit, this bottle is actually the first thing that actually is kind of offending me and making me feel old. Because okay. I'm sitting here trying to Try, read this bottle. You can't see it. I'm like, can you read this bottle for me, babe? She's like, okay. So she starts knocking it out, reading the bottle. The bottle Because mm-hmm. I want to make sure I follow the instructions. Because it looks kind of serious. Mm-hmm. And um, I just, I'm weird about pills. Right? And this is just a vitamin. No, Anybody can, can get it. It's not can, something I understand heavy. what you're saying, though. You're putting it in your body. Yeah. What's going to happen? Someone's got a headache. and What's going to happen? They're a third of my size. And they're dropping four or six. Motrin or Advil's, I'm like, yo, bro, it says one. It says one. <laughs> you know, I'm running here 300 pounds. Following like, the rules. I'm going to take one Motrin. I ain't trying to f- up this fortress. You know what I mean? <laughs> the fortress. Because <laughs> so, obviously I care what I put in my body. Um, <laughs> which is funny. Vaccines in the top. Anyway, so it, it, it's just this whole thing. 
but this vitamin has me fired up. I feel great. Mm-hmm. You look great. You look excited. You look Thank full you, of energy. Oh, I know. Energy. I know. <laughs> now, I may completely just fall out in the next 45 <laughs> minutes, so we might have to keep it short. But look, so I'm so excited you're here in the studio today. Um, let We talked about these deposits, the relational equity that we have with each other. Absolutely. Um, and it's been a minute. I thought it would be funny to, to take them back. Um, Cause gosh, we met in fall of 2010, yes. correct? Wow, dude. That's a good memory. Um, fall of 2010. Um, we both had started working at water's edge. Okay. Yep. And we're, we're like knowing each other for what? A couple months, a couple months. And do we did, yeah. We didn't run across each other that much even no. in the office. Uh uh-uh. and, and what happened? What, what was, <laughs> how do we really get to know each other, Larry? <laughs> well, I mean, it was, it was a crazy story, really, because, um, you know, I had a, I, we had a mutual friend in the office yes. um, who came to me, and he said, uh, he said, Larry, he said, you want to go hiking on the Appalachian Trail? And, I mean, I was pretty good friends with this guy. I don't know anything about hiking, dude. Like, I'm, yeah, just nothing. So I'm like, I don't know, man. He's like, come on, man. It's going to be fun. Me and Josh and Josh's friend is going. So I want you to go. So like Josh, you know, we're kind of friends and then he's going to have a friend and I want to have a friend too. So I really want you to come. And I was like, okay. So he, he, uh, he got me to go on this trip. He like talked me into it. And we were so excited. <laughs> I was going to ride with him. You and uh, you and uh, John were going to ride mm-hmm. together. And we were going to go up there and get everything. Well, dude, the day before, the night before we're supposed to go, I get a call. And my buddy's not going. Right. So this damn fool texted me <laughs> yesterday, actually. I haven't talked to him in a hot minute. And he texted me yesterday sharing some love. And I need to hit him up today. Okay. But, yeah. yes, that's uh, really funny. Yeah. Well, I do, and come on now. I love the guy. I still love the guy. Same. But he dropped the ball all over the place. He Didn't we me. take him shopping? We took like, him shopping like, like two, two nights, nights before. before. <laughs> yes, dude, exactly. Jonathan, we are running around Walmart and Bass Pro getting all kinds of gear. Mm-hmm. Because this trip we've been planning for a month. Uh, yeah, like a month, month and, and a half. half. Yeah, absolutely. Homeboy had prepared not even like an ounce for this trip. And we're going into the wilderness for days not to come out. Yes. <laughs> I've been in Bass Pro Shop like twice. I'm a big proponent of leave nature alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair. But yeah, I don't blame. I mean, I think my comfort have uh, shifted over the last 12 years. Yeah, things yeah. I prefer. But it, it is a good time. But you need to be prepared. And what people consider levels of preparedness, Mm -hmm. I I would say vary (laughs) from personality to personality. And we'll get into that a little bit. So so someone not to be named, let's just refer to them as Stefan. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's great. (laughs) Stefan bailed. Yeah, Stefan said My uh, belly hurts. Yes. He said, My belly hurts and I'm not going. (laughs) <laughs> i was like i was like dude i can't believe we're doing this i was like i mean and, and josh no just i was like i don't know this guy josh right and i don't know uh john yeah i was like but their counts wife worked with us also. yes absolutely yes. i was like i don't know these guys and now you got you're bailing and i'm going into the woods for three days with two men that i just don't know at all and None of that uh, sounds right uh, yeah yeah, like a situation. You yeah, no, put no. Into. I was like, well. <laughs> so yeah, no. It's what the not. kids call a uh, pause nowadays. <laughs> pause. <laughs> exactly. So I said, uh, I said, dude, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, uh, we went on the trip, and what a time we had! And uh, it was wild. Yeah, it was. It the was three wild. of us. The three of us. We went, and none of us knew what we were doing. I think John probably knew the most, and uh, you know, we just did our best to spend three days in the forest. What were um, what are the trail names? Oh, remember? dude, I I absolutely remember. Well, it. Share the trail names. I, um, John was the doc because my uh, my foot needed surgery on the trip. So you get your trail names if you've never hiked the Appalachian Trail. The the trail gives you the name. Uh-huh. Like it, you don't pick your name before you go. You the trail gives it to you. So, so we got Doc Goodwood. Doc Goodwood <laughs> was John for doing surgery on my foot. I was gears because I had put together a, a mess of equipment. You had so much stuff. Dude, the my backpack was overflowing. Stuff was falling off of it. <laughs> <So much shit. laughs> I think I think I think my shit is still on the Appalachian Trail near uh Harper's Ferry. Oh god. So 
uh, didn't mean to drop it, but the bag wouldn't hold. And then, uh, so I was gearhead. And then uh, you were looking out for us the whole time, Josh. You cared. And so you you were the trail mother. Yes, trail mother. <laughs> Which had many implications. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the trail mother uh, w- was the boss of the trip. So it, I it think was it was about 30 seconds into that trip I fell. And mother <laughs> well, I played into why that, I, I was, screamed. That's it. exactly what it was. I wasn't going to bring that up, but no, we, I we, ate it. <laughs> if, if you can imagine, we were so excited to be on the trail. <laughs> we were like, we were like little kids. We were so excited. We were probably 50 yards in and uh, Josh falls. I uh, ate it. Dude, I mean, it was raining in your leg. Bent, yeah, it was raining. Well, I remember having that big ass backpack on and I looked to the right as I realized, okay, my back isn't broken. But I can see my my foot. I was like, oh, oh yeah, this ain't good. Mm-mm. And I was a much smaller man than I am now, <laughs> but I was still a large man. Mm-hmm. And um, Larry and John are like, ah, uh, yeah, your leg was bent in a you, way. You good? Everything good? I was like, well, we're about to find out. Yeah, it was Pop bent up. In. Everything's cool. But the thing is, if you don't know, if you're not into hiking or you know you don't know much about the Appalachian Trail, particularly the largest section of the Appalachian Trail, which runs through Virginia, yes, sir. our beautiful western part of our state here. Um, in the fall, it's cloudy and rainy, and there's a lot of leaves. A lot of And leaves. they fall off the trees, and they cover up all the rocks and things of that nature. Um, and so wet leaves on top of rocks, oh. big rocks, become slightly hazardous. And my ass just took off down this trail. We're so and my excited. Ass took off on you the were- ground too. When I fell. <laughs> you were leading the way. It was a hot mess. So we spent that trip was what three days? Yeah, we were three days in the forest. Three days. Three days in the woods. In the forest. We dropped a. We had one car. We all rode together. Yeah, we we had to do that. Stefan. Stefan couldn't kind of messed up that deal. Yeah. So we had to find some random person, um, a service super cheap, um, oh, to to drive us back to our car. Yeah. But the reality is we just, we parked the car, Jonathan, and we just started hiking north. Mm -hmm. And we knew at some point we would get to Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. We just had to follow the white blaze. The white blaze. It's a real three wise men situation y'all had going on. We were following the star. We were following the star. (laughs) I will tell you that that first night was one of the sketchiest nights of my life. Yeah, It was was kind of my fault because... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was uh, I was so excited to see the water. I wanted to see the Shenandoah River. Yes. So I um I I planned for us to leave the safety of the Appalachian Trail yes. and take a side trail. Uh-huh. Um if you're just getting started in hiking and you're interested, don't do this uh when you're just starting off. Yeah, and so side trails are cool. Like there's lots of things you can go see and yeah. do like when you're hiking whether it's Appalachian Trail or others. There's usually you know, little, little side spots to go to. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you're on the Appalachian trail, this trail runs along the top of the mountains. Right. So even maybe those who aren't great with like geography and stuff, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just real baseline rivers are typically not at the The top top of the mountains. So if you want to see the river, Mm -hmm. like be up next to it, you have to go down the mountain you're hiking to find it. And then, you know, at some point, you got to go back up the mountain. Up the mountain. Oh, gosh. To get to where you're going. So it's our first day. My ass ate it early on. <laughs> you know, we we start out really hot. It's cloudy. It's rainy. It's cold. We're just like blowing through, you know, our energy. We're eating snacks a half mm-hmm. a mile in. Oh, yeah. I dude. mean, we're all soft. Like, yes. this is not, we're not hardened people to go into the woods. R- um, various levels of experience, most of which from like 30 years prior. You know, we exactly. Children, yeah. And we went camping. <laughs> yeah. So, how far down did you guys have to go to get to the river? Far. So, um, dude, so very far. Miles. Very far. Yeah. How far is the, your town river right over there? Oh, Look, no, but that's not on. the yeah, Shenandoah. Yeah, yeah it was a Shenandoah. It's Shenandoah. <laughs> and which was a very good river to us in years to follow. Uh, we had some fun on it. Yes, know, we did. And stuff. But we, we hiked down and, and we're running late. It's dark now. All right. Well, and, we didn't have any idea what it meant two miles like i thought two no. miles was nothing we got this but dude you got 40 pound pack on and you're hiking over rocks and terrain that's trying to kill you every step so it's dark now we oh. have our headlamps going um some of us with flashlights because we didn't have headlamps and we're walking down this trail heading towards what we believe to be the river it is now pitch black oh no we are in the woods 
the noises we start hearing. <laughs> What was going on in the forest? Are crazy. <laughs> I pull my gun out. Yes, you so did. So I'm walking, headlamp, <laughs> gun. Larry's got his it lights. It sounded like there were demons in the forest. It was the weird shit, man. It was it weird. It wasn't good. So we finally get to a flat area. And mm. I don't even think at night we realized we were at the river. We couldn't the, see anything. We could, it was pouring down rain. It was nuts. Yeah. Everybody, we just said There was no it. moonlight, no starlight. We threw our tents up. We just found kind of a little flat area. We threw the tents up, said F it. Like, we'll see you in the morning. Yep. That was a long-ass night, man. I it didn't sleep at all. It was like crazy. Um, Larry's tent, basically his father-in-law. No, no, no. Who? <laughs> it was, uh, was it Tony uh, Dominique. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so a great guy, Tony Dominique, lends Larry all kinds of gear. And um, this tent, it is a uh, vinyl coffin. Let's call it what it is. It looked is. like a coffin. It was. When I set it up. Horrific. It was, it was. It was the size of half this table. You couldn't move when you were in it. You just slid in it and then yeah, zipped it was, your head up. It was bad news. <laughs> I and believe so, that's called a body bag. Dude, it, dude, it was it a body was bag. It was a body bag with a pole attached to it. I mean, it was what, small. When I set it up, I was like, what have I done? Yeah, and so it just pours storms all night. We hear branches falling all around us. I'm like, a tree's going to fall on me and kill me. I think this is how it's going to end. This is so dumb. <laughs> we wake up the next morning. I peek out the tent. And you're already up, I think. Oh, yeah. I just and, stayed up all night. And Larry is standing by the bank of the river. The river. We had made it. And there were, across the river, is a farm. And there's all these cows. So all I can imagine what we were hearing when these cows banging all night. Because it was. <laughs> Dude, the cows like, were into the cows some romance. Were, they, there was a lot of romance going on. It was the, very loud. Across the way. <laughs> so, but we had no clue. And it was a beautiful spot. But in our minds where we were at, we cre- for me at least, I created this hell. I'm in this place where I'm going to die. Nothing yeah. good is going to come of this. What's going on? That was me. Sorry. Um, it, it, it's just chaos. But in the morning, the sun was out. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was the coolest place. We ate a little breakfast. We were actually near a waterfall. We didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. There was a waterfall. <laughs> the Shenandoah River was there. It was gorgeous. It was a really cool experience, and um, we hiked out. Now, here's the funny thing about Mm -hmm. that first trip, and this was the first of many trips, okay, guys? We probably, what did you do, six, seven trips all together? Yeah, we've got about about 290 miles under our belt. That's a big deal. That is true. That's a big deal. We hiked from Harpers Ferry all the way to Shenandoah National Park. Oh, we completed the park. Uh, Well, we got like three miles left. Do we? Mm -hmm. I thought we got all the way to... um, no, you're right. We're at the priest. The priest. The priest is on the south side down of Wintergreen. Yeah, and that, Drive. that stopped us from going back. Yeah, we looked at that and we're like, mm, maybe next year. And that's yeah. been seven years, yeah. maybe eight. Yeah. So, <laughs> Larry, though, that first trip. So, day one, Larry's in sweatpants. Oh, yeah. And remind you, it's pouring down rain. It's a bad idea. So, Larry's in sweatpants and sneakers. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, yeah, they were the, Skechers. Ske- yeah, they were shoes. for the Appalachian Trail. These, these aren't boots. So, he already mentioned how John got his name because his foot was jacked with blisters Blisters from the um, sketchers. So day two, he's carrying sopping wet sweatpants in his bag. Added about 10 pounds. I mean, to an already incredibly heavy bag. And I see Larry changed and ready to go for the day in the sketchers. But he's wearing corduroy pants. <laughs> corduroy. <laughs> so, so stupid. I was like, nothing can absorb more water than this, the Hanes sweatpants he was wearing the day before. I was wrong. Corduroy. You didn't know I had pants. corduroy in the bag, I baby. No clue. I had corduroy in the bag. He dressed for a weekend at church camp. I mean, he had so much stuff. And yep. it, but hey, I will tell you this. You knocked out that trip. And we did it. You were not a punk no. by any means. No. You manned up. I was soaking wet the whole time. It it was so fun, but so miserable at the same time. Yeah. We had a couple little bucket list items that we had kind of like, hey, we want to do this. We want to do that. And Larry, one of the things Larry <laughs> really wanted to do was like drink from like a, 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 str- a mountain stream. Mountain stream. <laughs> Straight from the stream. So, uh, John. John's very analytical. John is, um, he's, he's very smart. Yeah, he, uh, he knows a lot of things. He really does. Um, he loves to process things. Yes. And um, John, God love him, also likes to make things way more difficult than they need to be. Yeah, uh, when we think about it, John, I, I feel like you're kind of in the middle. And like, I'm kind of like 
fly yeah. by night, seat of the pants. Mm -hmm. John's on the far, other far extreme yes. analytical. And then I feel like you're right in the dead middle. Yeah. So we're going along. And, and so if I'm going to choose what stream to drink out of, I'm going to let John decide which one makes the most sense. That's right? exactly right. And he also had like wilderness survival training in the military and all that crap, which, which I did not. He was the good choice. Okay. So we're like, we'll let John decide. Yep. So, well, guys, you know, I think based on the pitch of this, this waterfall and the way this is the speed at which it's moving, this is good water. And we're like, shit. Okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so John takes his, his cup, mm -hmm. scoops the water out, takes a sip. Cause John will take one for the team. John is a great dude to have in your corner. Cause he will take, he one will for lead the, the way. Yeah. He will, he will find out. Always got to have the homie who's willing to get dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John was John. We were heading right he down that first. road, but we all chased a little too quick behind to see if it really would affect <laughs> anything. So John drinks, Larry takes it, drinks, Larry, <laughs> Larry hands it to me. And I cup. knew you, I knew you, I knew you were sketchy about this. That's yeah. why. So yeah. I really wanted you to do this with me. It was important. <laughs> so Larry hands me the cup. I take the cup. I start to drink. I hesitate. And, and I there, knew there was something. something floating in the cup. <laughs> Larry immediately says, what no, do you no, say, I Larry? Knew th I knew there was something in the cup because I had seen it. And I was like, J Josh isn't going to drink it. And I was so sad because I wanted you to be a part of it. <laughs> so I, I was ready for it, except I didn't have what I was going to say ready. But you looked, at, you looked at it and you saw the little thing floating in the cup. And then you looked at me and I said, don't worry, Josh, that is from my mouth. <laughs> yes. And I looked at him. I'm like, okay. And I drank the whole thing. I just crushed it. And he didn't say that's from my mouth. He goes, it's of my mouth. <laughs> I, did. I said, don't worry, Josh, that's of my mouth. That's of my mouth. And I was like, okay. And <laughs> well, that must be it. totally fine. Yeah, it must be fine. I, yep. Why of your mouth was better than the stream. Yeah. And what know. black stuff was coming out of Josh's <laughs> And that's where the pandemic started. Probably. <laughs> it is. We were ground zero for COVID, I guess. Oh, wow. But man, that was such a crazy trip. And that's one of my most favorite <laughs> memories. I mean, there's so many from our times on the trail and stuff, but that damn cup story, I don't know how many times I've told that <laughs> over the years. And we have video of that. Yeah, we remember do. when we made our poor families come over to the house and I cooked, I made you barbecue and, and we, we made played like the 45 minute video yes, of our trip. I, I recorded the, the trip <laughs> and then I edited it and I put terrible music behind it because it was the free Some music that came music. with the camera. Yeah. It was like a banjo. Oh my God. And we made everybody watch it. And they were so bored. The Everyone kids couldn't have given a crap. Nobody cared, but we loved it. We laughed so hard. I mean, it was a, a tremendous video. We should actually, um, if I can find it, we might have posted it on Facebook. If I can find it, um, we might put some clips and promo for for this week. Yeah, of, that'd be fantastic. That would be a really fun thing to to remember. Um, but we did several trips, and we had people join us over the years and and fall out mm -hmm. yeah. um, and not come back for another trip. It was fun because after that trip, then we were the veterans, uh -huh. and and we had that first trip really was a trial by fire. Yes, we. we we got lost. Uh, I got, I wasn't, uh, John wasn't feeling well. Yeah. I had to have surgery on my foot. Um, it was, it was, it was wild. So then when we went back, I kind of felt like we were trail tested a little bit and we were able to bring people with us. Yeah. Um, and that, that was a lot of fun to, to, to see them experiencing it. The things that we'd experienced that were so hard for the first time. Right. And so we had some friends super fit. Um, hold on one second, guys. Oh, yeah. Um, Sorry. Um, we had one of our great friends, Daniel, joined us. Mm. Daniel's like seven feet tall. Yes, he is. Very healthy. Yeah, fit, very healthy. Lean. Very fit, lean. Uh, his trail guy. name was uh, Stride Right. <laughs> yeah. He and moved. Dude, I always felt like I walked fast on the trail till the first time we took Daniel with us. Yeah. It, he was just gone. He's gone. And, you know, we, we all kind of have our way. Like you got, like I said, you got different personalities. People approach the trail differently. Yep. Um, and that's okay. There's, there's seasons of talking, you know, there's seasons of just being by yourself and enjoying the solitude. That's exactly right. Sometimes you walk together with a friend group. Sometimes you're alone in the woods yeah. and it's amazing. Yeah. And it it's really cool. And I know when we, when that group started to expand, people would be like, Josh, good. He okay. I just enjoyed walking. Yeah. You it know, was real nice. And just, just walking. So, yep. And usually I was up in the front. Mm -hmm. Usually Leading your away. pace was, you know, Bring coming up along the rear. in the rear. <laughs> and, you know, I'd slide to the back. We hang out, talk and catch up. Mm -hmm. You know, move around. It just, it just was so, it was really nice. I missed that a lot. Me too. It was really, really 
good times. And the bonding is incredible because over the 290-ish miles that we've done, at some point you're going to need some sort of assistance, some sort of help. Uh-huh. And that is a huge bond when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, I'm, I know that I have had gotten tired on the trail and had asthma issues. And yep. then, um, you know, I know that you've gotten tired on the trail and had leg issues. And uh-huh. John has had migraines where I feel like I was almost carrying him on the trail. Yeah. And uh, it's just really those moments when you can actually help people when you're out in the middle of nowhere, your friends. Yeah. It just bonds you so much. And you see it through and you get it done. And you, you always get it done. You have to. You have to. Um. So you remember how did we like to start our trips? What did, what would we do? Where oh. would we stop? Where would we stop? Cracker Barrel. Oh my! Oh my gosh! Yes, we start. We start by uh, stopping the Cracker Barrel on the way up. We've always had Cracker Barrel. Yep. And then at the end of the first, <laughs> at the end of the first trip, all I could think about was at, I felt like we were only in the woods for three days, right. but I felt like we had been there for years. three months, years, yeah. years. And all I wanted was a Big Mac from McDonald's. Yep. So every trip we start at the Cracker Barrel. And we end at McDonald's. And McDonald's tastes like some of the finest food when you've been eating random <laughs> stuff on the the trail. Yeah, beef jerky for three days. McDonald's tastes amazing. It was great. And we go in there. So after that first trip particularly, because none of us thought about, okay, when we come off the trail the first time, you know, maybe we should have a change of clothes to like jump into. Yeah, dude. We had fresh the first time. Fresh clothes. Leave them in the car. Yeah. You can feel good. Mm-hmm. You know, flip flops, whatever. Nope. We just were straight homeless nasty coming out of the woods, wearing our trail boots, our trail gear, walking into McDonald's. Yeah, it it was a mess. And but man, that tasted so good. It and was. we smelled terrible and people were looking at us, but mm-hmm. it was it was fine. Oh, gosh, it, it was, was so fine. And that was the best burger I've ever had. We had one trip. Um, Great friend of ours uh, brought actually more stuff than Larry ever had. He brought of. so much stuff. I couldn't believe it. He had lanterns. He had a lantern. He had a uh, he had a bound hardback book <laughs> about the trail. About about six. It looked seven like an thick. It Jonathan, looked like a volume book. of the Encyclopedia Britannica. A wilderness survival. Absolutely. I always go with the mindset of it's three days. <laughs> I don't care if I lose everything. I won't die out here. <laughs> That's like, right. There, there's no way. Well, my buddy believed that too, and he was going to ensure the fact that he wasn't going to die out there. But yeah. he almost killed himself <laughs> with his gear, with the planning. Yeah. So. Um, that was cool. We had to get him out of the woods. We left him on the side of the road one time. We called we, your Uncle Tom. Yeah, we evac'd okay. him. We called yeah. for uh, Uncle Tom evac. To come pick him up. Yeah, picked him up on the side of Route 50 up in the middle of nowhere. Uncle Tom, there's a random guy with a beard on the side of the highway. <laughs> if you could just get him to his truck, that would be great. And then the next morning, we hiked out. And the next morning, he was waiting for us at the end of the trail with donuts. Apple donuts from Carter great. Mountain Orchard. It's great. He talks so much shit on us for leaving him on the side of the road. Yeah, it was a terrible thing to do, but, dude, we didn't have a choice. What are we going to do? And my thing is, if we hadn't left you on the side of the road, we would have been forced to leave you on the trail. Yes. We got, I see, like, I see we got we saved him. him. We saved him. We got him to the road. We got him Uncle Tom. Yeah, when he listens to this, I'm going to get so much shit. He's going to be blowing my phone up. Jonathan, no. you don't like this, do you? You guys put yourself in a lone survivor situation and then are commending yourselves for acting like lone survivor. Y'all put yourselves there. We did. We did put ourselves there. All of these were our own choices. Yes. All you remember of when I thought it was a good idea for me to have no tent and use a hammock? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, your hammock, I think... I think I can't remember either almost did or did come unhooked from the tree and you almost went over the mountain. Yeah. We, that when we left our one great friend who will stay unnamed um, on the side of the road, you know, we, we jetted and that, that week, that particular trip, I would try it out this ultralight hammock. Yeah. You I'm were like, always trying to um, uh, lighten, lighten the load. Yes, which I is figured physically smart. I carried so much already. <laughs> I didn't want to carry. You more. wanted to be efficient. That's what you were trying to do. Yes. You're, I think the game was efficiency and you enjoyed it. You liked that part of it. I did. Like I really, really it more really did. and more efficient. And so we're sitting there. We had to take off. We get our buddy. We know he's straight. He's getting picked up. And then we got to get down this trail because we're trying to get to a campsite. Yeah. And, um, we get to the, the stop for the night, which we had to get to if we were going to complete the next day, which we had to get completed by the end mm-hmm. of the next day. So we got to get to a certain stopping point. We're rolling. We get in there. That entire site is full. And again, these campsites aren't like you're rolling up on a KOA no. in the evening. It's just flat. These are just wild backcountry sites yes. where random people who are on the trail, you hope aren't serial killers, um, are already 
staged up. We've met some weird people. Uh-huh. And we try to roll in as a unit and uh, be the guys who are friendly, but seem off enough that you don't really want to mess with. Yeah. I think that's a good way to go. I'm friendly, but we ain't the ones to try with. Yes, right? that's exactly right. So we end up having to go through the campsite and go up a fire road. Mm-hmm. And so my dumb And this ass, is just to find flat ground. Just somewhere to try to sleep. If you're like, why can't you just camp anywhere, Josh? Why can't you just camp anywhere, Larry? It's because everything is slanted and your tent will literally roll down. You're on top hill. of a mountain. Yeah. There, just and to, there's trees everywhere. Yeah. You cannot do it. Right. And there's huge rocks coming out of the ground. It's just just a mess. So it's, we went up the fire road to find somewhere to camp. We found somewhat flatter surfaces. The guys threw up their tents, jumped in. Mr. Hammock here. <laughs> know what they don't have on fire roads trees yeah they cut down in the mountains you know where there's fire roads going up the side of the cliffs yep so know where the trees are the cliffs yeah. so my ass strings that hammock up i was so over the i was side so worried about you of the cliff and i could pull the hammock if you're watching on on youtube i'm, I'm demonstrating like had to pull the hammock over to the fire road to the road sit in it it swings me over the side and then i turn and lay down over the cliff. Over the cliff. You're hanging over the cliff. Uh huh. To say I slept well uh, would be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrific. And I was literally worried about you all. I don't let anyone, I would never invite anyone into my tent. Oh, I was you, like, Josh, you yeah. I was like, please don't die. Yeah. I would rather you come just stay in this tent. Yeah. Isn't how they to- isn't that how they tortured that guy in Game of Thrones? They just held him up in the air and oh, made yeah, him sleep the in the air. Uh-huh. Yeah, the cage. Yeah, yeah. I did that to myself. My I'm a si- sick individual. My <laughs> sympathy is just declining. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm just trying to share with the people lessons that yeah. I've been through. So someone doesn't say, "Hey, I'm getting in a backpack and I think this hammock thing's the way to go." It is not. It is not. It is not. It it seems like it would be more efficient, but it's life threatening. It sucked. Yeah. You had a and bad so time. I ended up, as we would, you know, move through our trips, yep. I ended up getting back to a tent mm-hmm. and I decided that I will carry the weight in the tent. I invested in a really great sleeping pad that was heavy as hell, but, you know, it was comfortable. I had a pillow built into it yes. so I could sleep a little bit. Yep. And I started taking NyQuil at night. That's what does it. I had NyQuil every night and I could sleep great. Yep. But leading up to that, it was a train wreck. But man, it was such, it was always fun. Remember, we would run up on bear. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. last story, and we'll wrap this up because you and I could do freaking days of this. Yeah, absolutely. You remember you had a trip planned with a friend. I did. Okay. And okay, we're not going to get into any type of um, patterns here if people bail on you the night before. Uh, yeah. But you had <laughs> yeah. put in for some vacation time. You yes, were just taking a couple of days. You were going to the mountains. Yes. Um, I was jealous because I was working. Yep. You're going with friends. You come into the office that morning. Yep. What had happened? Uh-huh. Well, once again, Stomach ache. <laughs> I don't know what this is all about, man. But my buddy said he had a stomach ache. <laughs> I don't know if they just decide they don't want to hang out with me or what. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I was like, well, I, I'm not going to go. I, I mean, I feel like I'm pretty good on the trail now, yeah. but uh, I wasn't going to go by myself. Sure. So um, I just called it off and, and I had all my gear in the car, uh, but I just went into work instead. Decided not to use my day off. And you, right. you saw me and you're like, dude, what the heck are you doing here? and uh i was like josh i was like my buddy can't go i just i'm just not gonna go and you're like what and i was like yeah dude he's not feeling well and you're like dude i'll go yeah in I the moment in the moment you literally went to your house you gr- you had a little bit of stuff already ready to go in your bag and you filled it with beef jerky mm-hmm. and uh we just headed out like half day we left at lunch that was it it was fantastic and we went to a trail called the devil's staircase yes which was beautiful as we did this (laughs) hike but here's the thing that's crazy so when we drove out that particular summer i kind of have a couple rules and i i pass on several of the rules to make this trip work i don't like to hike when it's hot because when it's hot stuff's out moving around like snakes and it was all bugs yeah it was july august it was hot as can be yeah and we hadn't had a lot of rain so forest fires were going crazy and I in had Shenandoah no Park. And so as we're driving out, we just see all the smoke and all that. We're driving up the road in the mountain. There's the the wilderness fire department, the, the park fire department parked all over. They're cutting trails and all this and they're stuff. they're trying to contain it. Yeah, and they, they didn't shut down the areas we were in, but they did shut down areas. But we're hiking and huffing, and it is smoky. Like it's smoky, it's hard to breathe. And dude, it was a hundred degrees. It was hot as can be. I'm like, this is not fun. So we're hiking, but we're having a good time, Larry and I. We were enjoying it. We had decided 
early on we were never going to go at this time of year again. Yeah, for sure. And so we thought at best this was going to be a two-night deal. Yeah. We're going to get through it, and it was going to be fine. What ended up happening was we get the hike. Everything's cool. We get out to double staircase. We see the view. It's nice. I never knew a canyon like that was Yeah, it looked like something out of Colorado. It was wild. It was wild. We see that. We enjoy the moment. We take pictures. We talk. We share stories. Um, I probably ate some jerky. Yeah, you did. You know? Some Snickers bars. I think you had some Snickers bars. A little trail mix or something. We turn around. We start hiking back. And this trail is very dense. Because, again, it's summer. So, if you're not familiar with Virginia, Virginia underbrush is just dense. Mm -hmm. I mean, there that path was maybe two feet wide Mm -hmm. and then it's just brush and trees and we're hiking along hiking along hiking along and we keep hearing something kind of rustling this is not good i swear (laughs) 10 yards is probably being generous is that probably too much no dude it was close it was on top of that freaking bear walks out of the brush yep he stops Mm -hmm. larry and i shit in the <laughs> he's in the middle of the trail. Like yep. we've got nowhere to go. He he there is there is nothing. And this is a very large black yeah. bear. He stops, looks at us. I didn't realize how big they were. Like, what's up? Mm-hmm. He's like, and we're like, my, like nothing, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, this is my trail. What y'all yeah. doing? And then he walks straight in. And here's this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds beast through this dense brush. Moving like a cat, yeah, not on a, on foam, and yeah, not a sound. Well, y'all are in his crib. No, I I get it, I get it, mm-hmm. I get it. You are right about that. I just I was banking on the fact that they see me before I see them. <laughs> they're more scared of me than I am them, and they're bouncing when they see me coming. I mean, I've never expected anything to go wrong on the devil's staircase. <laughs> Look, y'all Jonathan, could, y'all couldn't have picked Jesus' <laughs> walkway. Analytical mind. <laughs> Jesus' walkway. Anyway, jo- your high using intelligence logic. Yeah. and logic just makes it. Come on, calm down, Jonathan. Look, so <laughs> this damn bear goes on about its way, and I don't know about Larry, but I was high strung. You know, the rest of that afternoon. That was evening. another. That was another sleepless night. Because yeah. I knew the bear was just waiting for me to go to sleep. And then I'm thinking, man, are we about to get engulfed in flames? Because the smoke seemed to get denser. Yeah, it's it, not. It, I didn't. It was terrible. It's making me sick. Yeah, yeah, we woke up the next morning, and you said to me, "You're like, hey, man, I'm feeling." I was done. Terrible sinuses were jacked. Yeah, well, because dude, it uh, the heat didn't get down below 100 even when the sun no. went down. It so was we hot. hiked out that day. I think we grabbed McDonald's and went the hell home. Yes, we did. I drove actually. I drove your car. Cause you yeah, cause I wasn't feeling, feeling well I was like, dude, can you just take the car, man? You're yeah. Like, yeah, dude, I got it. So that was a crazy, t- every trip was difficult and we learned a lot with each of them. Yeah. But everyone also has really funny stories. Oh, dude, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't give that trip up j- just from the memories. From, I mean, it was, it was still an amazing trip. I mean, seeing the devil's staircase, yeah. seeing a, a black bear. I mean, I'm, I'm glad we were safe. Yeah. Uh, but I mean that I had no idea how big they were. I couldn't believe it was probably two or three trips after that. We had a big group with us and it was an October hike mm-hmm. and we saw bear after bear after bear. We saw so many yeah, they're people just walking around saying sight. And I was like, y'all, they uh, are we breeding right now? Are they aggressive? Like what? <laughs> yeah. What's happening yeah, right now? Let me start to throw snacks over here. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> well, you know what we should really do at some point? We could really write a really great book for yeah. people who are into the trail getting about started our adventures uh, yeah getting stuff. started about things they could look out for and just to yeah. hear some crazy stories it would be really funny because i feel like something always goes down when we go out no matter what and we try to keep things so calm but it never is the best part of that statement is that's you and i going anywhere together period it 100%. doesn't have to be the trail it doesn't have to be a cookout it doesn't have to. if we're together yeah. there is going to be fun yep there is going to be something ridiculous. Something's going to turn up. Um, we're going to learn. Yep. And one of us is going to have to help each other. Yep. That's very true. <laughs> and we're going to talk about it forever. Forever. Yep. Man, look, I want to honor your time. I want to, you know, I hope, guys, if you're out there listening that, um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of wisdom dropped on this podcast. But, damn, I, I hope that you got a laugh or two out yeah. of this. And um, I'm going to have Larry on again another episode because he, this guy is if. All right. If the Dos Equis guy. <laughs> was legitimately uh, an actual person. He's sitting across the table from me right Come now. Come on, man. That's, and, a, that's a huge um, compliment. <laughs> it's it, this. We've got stories, life, um, just a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. And I'd love to have you on talk about all kinds of stuff. I'd so, love to. But I want to leave this at a certain 
length that people we don't lose them at and and go. We're at about fifty minutes. Fifty? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah we're about good. fifty minutes. Our listeners like that, so Great. we'll even be at this. Larry, thank you for jumping in unplanned. Yeah, man. Thanks for uh, this. Was a gift. I really enjoyed being here today. This was a lot of fun. This was fun. And guys, um, check out Larry. Larry, how can people? connect with your antics and follow you and, and all those things. Well, I'm on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, my, uh, my name is Larry on score. That's right. E N S C O R E. And I'm actually a pastor at Ascent church. That's right. So you can find us at Ascent church.net. I'd That's love awesome. to see you guys there. That's cool. That's awesome. Well, check out Larry, follow him. It's always a good time and we'll get him in here to share some other stories and, and talk business and talk church. And, I would love and talk to talk all the good today though. Was this, talking fun. this was exactly what was needed. I, this was a blast. <laughs> Man, we love y'all. Thanks for listening. Um, if you like it, share it, and we'll see you next time.